Christmas. Bah, humbug. Hi guys, welcome to Whoville. Today we are making a whole assortment of Grinch themed treats that you can use for a dessert table or Christmas with the family. This chocolate covered pears, marshmallow pops with a Santa outfit, DIY chocolate candy balls, colorful pretzel rods, and Grinch hand tied cocoa cups. These ideas are all really simple to put together and aren't only for a party, they're perfect for a Grinch movie night in your pajamas by the fire. So let's grow the mean ones hard three sizes with these treats. I'm as cuddly as a cactus. And be sure to keep on watching. If you haven't made a chocolate bowl out of balloons before, it's a really fun trick that is a must try. For best results, you want to use small balloons. Mine are five inch clear transparent balloons. And to transform my chocolate into a Grinchy color, I'm adding chocolate chameleon candy coloring in the shade lime green to my Merkin's white chocolate mouth. And let me tell you, this chocolate chameleon or any lime green candy color in general is actually more of a minty green. So I also combine a few drops each of the Chef Master in green and yellow until I achieve my desired shade, which is similar to a yellowish green, just like Mr. Grinch. And I recommend going with the classic white mouth instead of the super white. It will be much easier to mix a color with less product. Now for the base of the bowl, it is optional to use a lollipop mold. If you don't have one, you can do it without a mold too, which I will show you. But with the mold, they come out much more thick and sturdy. I fill each lollipop circle halfway and chill them for 10 minutes in the fridge. Once you are ready to dip your balloons, go straight down into a deep bowl to create a clean line. But make sure to give that a second dip, otherwise the bowl will be too thin. And like I mentioned, if you didn't make the base with a mold, you can spread a circle of chocolate onto the parchment paper with a spoon before placing your balloon down. Just remember any white or colored chocolate is more soft and delicate for the bowls than a milk or dark chocolate. So it's always a good idea to twist the bowl back in for another coat then center the balloon over the base. We are one step closer to having these chocolate bowls from Mr. Grinch. Just chill them for an hour before popping the balloons. It is now after one hour in the fridge. We'll let the mean one do the honors of popping the balloons and peeling them away like the bad banana peel he is. There's lots of room in these bowls to fill them up with Christmas candies. But before doing that, I'm decorating the rim with white chocolate drips to look like icicles. I put a drip consistency chocolate into a squeeze bottle with a tip number two and alternated the length of the drips. Doing this with a turntable is helpful so that you don't handle the bowl as much and similar to doing drips on a cake. When the chocolate has dried, I'm applying a thin layer of edible adhesive all around the drips with a brush to allow the edible glitter spray to stick on. The Wilton glitter spray adds a pretty touch, but a little goes a long way. A few shirt pumps are all you need to look like the icicles on Mad Crumpet where Mr. Grinch lives. We can't forget his heart. I cut red fondant with a hard cutter and sprinkle tinker dust on top. Then attach that to the bowl with a dot of edible adhesive. And it is time to fill them up with your favorite Christmas candy. First, I dropped in some marshmallows and these Christmas M&Ms from Dollar Tree, along with Santa chocolate and a lump of coal. Looks like Mr. Grinch is on the naughty list with his bowl full of coal. The second train are these Grinch Santa Cap Marshmallow Pops. I asked Mr. Grinch himself if the marshmallow pops are going to be naughty or nice, and he voted nice since he loves marshmallows. 
For this easy train, I'm threading three regular sized marshmallows onto a lollipop stick. They aren't perfectly shaped, so feel free to squish them around a little bit with your fingers. But no worries, they kind of resemble the same shape as the body of the Grinch. After all the marshmallows are on the sticks, I'm dipping them into the same color of green chocolate that I showed for the bowls. The key for a smooth look is to thin out the chocolate melts with your choice of oil, such as vegetable oil, Easy Thins, or Paramount Crystals. A tall cup works best, and I gently shake the excess off while the marshmallow pop is still upside down. Give it a shake, 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 and allow them to dry upright in a cake pop stand or block of styrofoam. To create the details for his face, I painted them on with black poppy paint and a thin paintbrush. Also on the side, I have a clear vodka handy to clean the brush. And before using your paint, be sure to shake it up really well and squirt out a little bit as you need since it tends to dry up really fast. Starting with his brows, I made short thin strokes and in between cleaned off my brush by dipping into the vodka and drying it off before going in for more paint. And almond shaped eyes, making the outline by the outer edge slightly thicker. Then by the inner corner, add a short and long curved line with a small jelly bean shaped nose, painting some shading in the center joined by a straight line. We start to recognize him after making his signature wide Grinchy grin and curved smile lines on each side, finishing by extending his slanted lashes. Last, I'm completing the eyes by filling them in with a yellow chocolate. I pick up a glob with a toothpick and quickly push it around to prevent the chocolate from getting bumpy. And be sure to cover everything inside of the outline. While we set them aside to dry, we can work on these Santa caps. I have a dipping fork for the bugle. Just slide the bugle over the fork, being careful not to break it, and turn to coat it with a red chocolate. It looks just like a festive Santa cap. Place them onto a sheet of parchment paper to dry, and settle out your chocolate in between each dip, also shaking any of the excess chocolate off of the bugle. As for the fur on Mr. Grinch's hat, I have a Ziploc baggie filled with white chocolate. The consistency is medium, not too runny, with a tiny corner snipped off the end of the baggie. Then I'm sprinkling on a white coarse standing sugar to give it an extra furry look. And the consistency of the chocolate shouldn't be too runny to pipe a thin straight line. Since the eyes are dry, you can go ahead and paint a small horseshoe shape with the poppy paint. Before you paint, check that the brushes aren't split and have a nice point to make the job easier. Last but not least, let's dress him up with his Santa cap. I brushed on a layer of green melted chocolate to attach the hat on his head, holding for about 10 seconds before letting go, always handling the hats with gloves to prevent the chocolate from melting. His heart grew three sizes with a cute red heart sprinkle to make him extra sweet. And all that's missing is the top of the Santa cap. I cut a mini marshmallow in half and secured it to the bugle with a bead of red chocolate. I'm as charming as an eel. Now they are both twinning in their matching Santa outfit. These colorful Grinch themed pretzel rods are simple, yet make a statement with assorted sprinkles and a touch of sparkle. I will be sure to link all the products down below. I thinned out my green chocolate and began dipping at 86 degrees to prevent any white spots. And 
and a tall cup is your friend for this. Lots of chocolate will pool on the bottom of the pretzel. So after shaking, I wipe the bottom off the edge of the cup and allow them to dry on a sheet of parchment paper. As the chocolate supply is running low, be sure to rotate the pretzel around or tilt the cup to the side to thoroughly coat your pretzel. They all look mean and green, and I have this edible tinker dust in the color Christmas red that has hints of silver in the dust. I sprinkle it on with a shaker for an even application after drizzling on my red chocolate. The result is the most stunning and eye-catching combination that is sure to impress any Grinch. For the other design, I paired this gold Tinker Dust with a classic green drizzle. The best part about Tinker Dust is that it's FDA approved and safe for use on any of your treats and comes in a wide selection of colors. Another way to add sparkle without an edible dust is a green sanding sugar. The coarse kind stands out and has more sparkle. And last, I'm taking green jimmies and brushing edible adhesive on the pretzel into an even layer for the effect of a fuzzy green fur. To ensure all the sprinkles stick, spread a generous amount around, not only on the top, don't forget the sides, you don't want bald patches of fur, and sprinkle on the jimmies a little at a time. They have that texture and same iconic look that's as cuddly as a cactus. The Red Heart Sprinkles have that touch of cuteness. For any small decorations like this, I dab a dot with a toothpick, and I love the way they add a Grinchy charm on the bottom by the line of the pretzel. My favorite treat by far were the Grinch pears, since they are the most unique. However, dipping them is a bit different than apples. I highly recommend the Anjou pears, which have a wider shape. And it's important that when you select them at the grocery store, you check the pears are able to stand up on their own. Pears have lots of ripe areas in them, so be gentle when inserting the wooden sticks and wipe off any extra juice. Hammering the sticks too hard can split the skin of the pears. And as for cleaning them, there is no need to remove the wax with vinegar like apples. Just a basic wash and dry with water and dip at 84 degrees with chocolate that has been thinned out. My go-to dipping container is this noodle bowl. Any deep bowl will do and dip straight down. My other tips are not to shake too hard or anything like you may do with an apple. Only a gentle shake and wipe off the side of the bowl. Pears are nearly as strong as apples on the stick, so pretend that you are dipping a cake pop and shake or wiggle as you would for that without letting it fall off of the stick. One last time, I had Mr. Grinch decide if the pears are naughty or nice, and he voted naughty this time. For his angry cat eyes, I cut a template out of parchment paper and traced onto the chocolate with a toothpick. It's a great idea if you aren't comfortable with freehanding them and ensures they are all the same size. Then go right over the line with your black poppy paint. I find it most helpful to test the poppy paint on the edge of a plastic cup for a thinner and sharper line. In between all the different details, I clean any remaining paint on the brush with clear vodka and wipe dry with a paper towel. Next for his brows, I paint short hair-like strokes almost like microblading his brows on. You can make them as thick or thin as you want by painting on another row of brows and extend the arch where his eye ends with some slanted eyelashes. On the inner corner of the eyes, I painted two overlapping curved lines, one long and one short to resemble his wrinkled expression, and the same jelly bean type of shape as we did for the nose on the marshmallow pops with the shading. Then completing him with his wide, mischievous grin and a wavy line on each end. Let's bring all of them to life 
cute with bright yellow eyes. Here I have a yellow royal icing and medium flood consistency. Or you can use that same method with a toothpick and the yellow chocolate melts like we did on the marshmallow pops. But for that you need to work very fast, constantly spreading since these cat eyes are a larger size, otherwise the surface will be bumpy. He's starting to look more like our grumpy friend. When the icing has completely set, it is time to paint on the pupils, which reminds me of a horseshoe. To achieve the shape, I sketch a little bit at a time and add more paint to thicken it up. If you see my Grinch mug hiding in the background, that's where I got my inspiration from. If you weren't to draw with edible marker, the ink runs out and appears dull, but the poppy paint is very dark, crisp, and defined to complement his realistic features. The final treat are the Grinch Hand Hot Cocoa Cups, also known as the Hot Cocoa Bomb Cups or Hot Cocoa Shots. The mold is a Wilton silicone shot glass mold. It's the perfect shape for a tall mug of cocoa as an alternative to the Solo Cups. As I'm filling the mold, I shake it down before adding more chocolate since there tends to be lots of air bubbles in here and it will create holes in your molded mugs. Once the mold is filled, I'm popping them in the fridge for at least 30 minutes or until completely set. Since there's lots of chocolates in the cups, it takes a little more time. And after the 30 minutes are up, I gently push them out of the mold and remove with my gloves on. It is best to avoid handling them too much or you may chance getting a big smudge even with the gloves on. The fun part is adding the cocoa mix and mini marshmallows like a hot cocoa bomb. This season, I really like the peppermint Swiss mist with the peppermint flavored marshmallows inside. Fill the mug about two thirds with the cocoa and remaining with the marshmallows as long as the top of the mugs are flat. To seal the top, I put the green chocolate into a piping bag to close the circle. I push the chocolate around with the tip and spread any clumps with a toothpick for a smoother finish. The part that makes the mugs even better are candy cane handles. I cut them on a diagonal and when you join them together, it makes the cutest little hearts. The diagonal cut looks even more elongated like a mug handle rather than cutting them straight. I dab a small amount of melted chocolate on the top and bottom as a glue to attach them to the side and you have your own mini mug. They already look so awesome clean as they are but we need to make them Grinch-tastic. On the front I added Grinch hand edible images. They have the furry hand with the ornament I got them from Etsy. And to stick them on I brush a small layer of light corn syrup to the back of the image and place on the center of the mug. I wanted to give the effect of an ornament photo frame, so I took gold bead sprinkles and arranged them around the circle of the edible image to look like a picture frame, just like that. And the easiest way to place them is with a toothpick, a dot of chocolate, and tweezers. To top off the mugs with a delicious swirl of cream, I have red and white buttercream, each in their own separate piping bags, then placed in one big bag fitted with a 1M decorating tip for a two-tone peppermint swirl and a holiday sprinkle mix from Sprinkle Pop that has assorted snowflakes, candy canes, Christmas trees, and Jimmy. Merry Grinchmas everyone! I hope you guys enjoyed making this Grinch table of treats with me and you like these ideas. It's Christina here, thank you so much for watching and I'll see ya in the next video.